that means? That means turn your radios up, switch your dials over, cause revive is alive. It's about that time. It's meet your girl POC. Tune in, let's go. You are listening to Revive Radio. The views and opinions expressed on Revive Radio does not necessarily reflect ownership, management, and advertisers of Revive Radio. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You already know what time it is. Reviveisalive.com. Once again, Reviveisalive.com. Tune in. Revive is alive. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. All I need is one mic. You know what time it is. Open up your ears. You know what time it is. Open up your mind. It's about that time. It's your girl POC. Hey! It's your girl POC. Hey! Yes. You know what time it is Open up your mind All I need is about that time Welcome to Revive Welcome to Revive Welcome to Revive Yep, yep, to the yep, yep You already know what time it is, man It's me, your girl, POC, host of Revive Radio We are live right now on reviveisalive.com Man, once again, that is reviveisalive.com You gotta get up anyway So why not get up with me, your girl, POC, man Each and every morning Starting at 7 a.m. Getting this good morning mix And don't forget, man, to tell a friend to tell a friend To go ahead and subscribe to that YouTube channel As well as that newsletter So you can stay locked with everything we got going on here at Revive Radio Because Revive is alive 365, 24-7 a.m. to the p.m. And you gotta get up anyway So why not get up with me, your girl, POC Tomorrow, man, you can get up with me, your girl, POC And you got DJ Reese coming through each and every Tuesday Each and every Friday Blessing us here at Revive Radio And don't forget about your guy, DJ Shango Each and every winning Wednesday, we go back Back to back and don't forget if you're an artist who got some good music you got a new project you got something coming out that you want the people to hear live on revive send it our way right now at revive.poc at gmail.com once again that's revive.poc at gmail.com and don't forget to mark your calendars it's going down june 23rd i need you all to be in the building pull up pop out and hop out and come get this cbd massages by your girl harmony the goddess once again the cbd massages stress the strain List Sunday series continues with Revive Radio and our sponsors over there, Hubberology, on June 23rd. So I encourage all you guys to go get your tickets right now so you too can live in peace, not pieces. But right now, I got my special guest in the building that I'm really excited to be speaking with. This is not his first time on the show. The very first time I met him was last year at South Philly Day, and he was down there doing some extraordinary things that really caught my attention. You know what I mean? His passion, his goal for the city of Philadelphia, his drive for the city of Philadelphia. Off here is definitely one thing that caught my attention and it's still catching my attention because he's trying to do it on a larger scale because he's running for city councilman at large what's up with you though go ahead and introduce yourself i got philly green man in the building with me right now obona hagen uh five eight to make philly great five eight love over hate candidate for city council at large and that five eight basically means that that's my number when you go into the uh, voting booth okay and i want to just uh impregnate that in everybody's mind okay that five eight will make philly great okay push five eight just think about five eight obona hagan's obona paul hagan's equals five eight well, they wouldn't let you put the aka philly green man up there no nah, that, that was just too much <laughs> that, that, was, that, was just too, that would be too much oh man yeah. i feel you and i wanted to ask you too um about the transition from going to you know philly green man which most people know you as to right. city councilman at large <laughs> you know what i'm saying well that's a big transition are you ready for that uh, leap? man well it, it actually goes back you know further than that uh from uh being a teacher at dobbins to okay being philly word man okay which was uh philly word was the magazine that pretty much uh launched the careers of uh eve uh, okay. I mean, from a from a journalistic perspective, because they had to put their work in. You 
know, to get to where they are. I love journalism. You know, recognized. It's one of my passions. Yeah. Philly Word was Eve's first cover. It was Beanie Siegel's first cover. I don't know if you remember um, Oskino and Sparks. Okay. You know, that, their first cover was Philly Word. We just basically communicated with the youth through, uh, through hip-hop back uh -huh. in 99. This is actually the 20th year anniversary of Philly Word okay. magazine. So... And not only did we, you know, spotlight the youth in Philly, but we gave opportunity for writers. You know, we had Talk about it. some great writers. I don't know if you know Chuck Creekmore. Chuck Creekmore uh, founded AllHipHop.com. And uh, his first uh, writings were in Philly Word magazine. Okay. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winner um, Tremaine, uh, Tremaine, Tremaine Lee. He uh, covered the Katrina um, hurricane, okay. and he got a Pulitzer for that. Then we have uh, PR specialist Septosa Foster, who first wrote about uh, Jill Scott and awesome. Jaguar. You know, so uh, yeah, we were doing a whole lot back then in so '99. So it's, it's it's some information in there that we need to know. Oh so yeah, are y'all dropping an exclusive 20 year? Well, edition? you know what, we wanted to do that for the uh, for the election. Okay. But just, you know, the campaign is just so rigorous. It was just really difficult to, <laughs> to focus on putting a publication out and then, you know, running this campaign. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're going to do it, you know, after the campaign, you know, between this primary and the uh, general election. You know, because we are going to win this election. You okay. Know, we are going to get those, uh, whatever amount of votes we need, we're going to get the most votes. Mm -hmm. Or the required votes, because it's, it's one of five seats, you know, that we're running for, uh, that city council at large. Mm -hmm. uh, it's seven total seats. It's five Democrat seats and uh, two uh, Republican or minority seats. That are open right now. Yeah, well, yeah, that, you know, are, yeah, that are open. You know, the incumbents have to run and, and you know, retain their seat if uh -huh. they want to uh, get back in. Exactly. And before we even get started in all the political conversations, I just want to ask you some questions. Yep. How was your mother's day? How did you spend your mother's oh, day? How does, wow. a, how does a person who's running for office get a break to take time with their family? I'll tell you what I did. So... For my mom, right, and shout out to my mom, cause shout out to all the mothers oh out there, God, yeah, for real, because my mom is the greatest. So I wouldn't be sitting here now if it wasn't for my mom. Not just because of you know obviously her birthing me, <laughs> but um, just you know her believing in me. Mm -hmm. You know I'm a little bit eccentric, a lot different than you know the normal person. I would say <laughs> you know I mean. I started growing locks when I was 21, uh -huh. beard full, and mind you, I was GQ down. Okay. You know, like I am now. You still you know? say you still uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, I had the locks, and you know, getting into my African roots, African culture. You know, I changed my name to Obona, mm -hmm. and Obona means the image of his father. My father was murdered okay. when I was two, but my mom was just, you know, and is still right there, you know, supporting me. She helped me to really put the magazine out nobody don't really know she was just behind the scenes just you know taking care of the things that I had that I couldn't take care of because mm -hmm. I wanted to get this magazine out and uh, to be able to recognize Philadelphia uh -huh. yeah, so. So that's big shout out yeah, to your mom yeah, shout out to my mom and Hagen yes that's yeah, really big yeah, and that's yeah. why I wanted to ask you that because some people don't see politicians as actual people as normal people right. you know what I mean oh, yeah. once they get in office it's like a shift which it should be a shift because now you are a leader and you right. have to be represented as, as a leader because you know that people in your community are supporting you, not following you. I right. feel like we are your supporters, you know right. what I mean? Right. So when it comes down to um, having that everyday life, it is important that you too, you know, um, worry about your mental health. Right. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month and I'm really pushing that, especially right. on our politicians because our politicians have to really focus <laughs> in on our communities to understand that it's a lot of mental yeah. health issues going on in our community you, you got me my head is going back and forth talk to me that's why we're here I, I gotta let you know that one of my sons attempted suicide okay you know and Sorry i always focus at, focus on that he's in the netherlands right now at the maastricht uh academy at a conservatory okay so he getting right oh he's cool i <laughs> he mean he, right. he got over that you know uh -huh. therapy and uh but i want to just make sure that people know that it's nothing to be ashamed of mm -hmm. you know I, i'll never forget when it first happened 
he took himself to the hospital and said that he was feeling suicidal. Okay. And it just blew me away. I was going to the hospital. I'm like, okay, come on, let's go home. And he's like, Bob, I can't go. I got to stay here, you know, and get right. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was my first experience with, um, you know, mental illness on that level. But, of course, we have mental illness throughout our family, you know, mm -hmm. trauma and everything. But, um, yeah, so definitely focus on mental, mental, mental illness and, um, you know, being, uh, you know, getting therapy and yes. being aware of it. But going back to what I did on Mother's Day, I went to church, too, okay. <laughs> on Mother's Day. I went back to the church that I basically grew up in, where I became a trustee, and, and um, just went back there to, to talk to the people. I went back a few weeks ago during the day, but went back, and uh, it was just ironic because obviously the sermon was about mothers <laughs> and he was talking about just really how much mothers you know do and how like no matter how bad your mom may be whether she may be on drugs or whatever mm -hmm. you better not talk about my mama because you just got respect you, you know what i mean so no matter what you know we love our mom so that's what i did i, I spent the day uh in, in church and then i went out campaigning Awesome. Going from, you know, one part of the city to the next part of the city, dropping flyers off, talking to people, meeting people. And that's been the most rewarding thing, really, is just talking to the people. Facts. And but 90, you've been doing that for a while now. <laughs> I'm about to say, you these know people know your name and your yeah, face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, when I did the magazine, it was the same thing. And, you know, getting to the, going back to the campaign, it reminds me of when I put the magazine out. Okay. Because we had to go through the month of identifying the stories, the cover, you know, who were going to be the writers, the photographers, and where it was going to be distributed, and how many we were going to distribute, and how many were going to go to the newsstand, and I did most of that, mm -hmm. you know, and I was able to do all of that within maybe, uh, you know, a 14-day period for every issue. Okay. So this campaigning is nothing different. It feels the same way. I went 24 <laughs> hours, you know, with the magazine. I would be out 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning taking it to clubs and everything. And I'm doing the same thing now and more, you know, because of technology. And that's the interesting thing, man. Talk about it. We were ahead of the curve with the magazine mm -hmm. because we had a website and a print version back in 1999. Mm. So mind you, there was no smartphones. <laughs> you know what I mean? No smartphones. And I would say less than 50% of the population worldwide was online. Mm -hmm. You know, probably less than that. So there was really no infrastructure to accomplish what we had in mind. And so we finally caught up with the curve, you know. Yes. So we can uh, put the magazine out or promote a campaign. And then people can see the poster, right? And immediately they can go to their phone and Google, and go to the website. Mm -hmm. I caught people standing in front of my door, you know, with their phones. Trying you know, to read it, trying to figure out Googling, who you are. You know, and like, I'm like, are you guys Googling me? And they turn <laughs> around, we both start, you know, we all start laughing. But it just tells you the, the, the age that we're in mm -hmm. with technology. And that's the it's unknown. Like the palm of our fingertips. Right. Come on, we have a multi-million yes. dollar piece of equipment in our hands that used to take up a whole city block you know, <laughs> when the computers were first it took mm -hmm. up a whole city block three four five stories uh -huh. and now it's at the in the palm, palm of, of our hands fingers. but that's also something that scares me though if i can be honest with you it scares me because the amount of distractions that having these devices at the palm of our fingertips can really right. give us and last week was actually philly philadelphia tech week right um and one thing that i was talking to a lot of the you know the techies there was that we have to be able to control technology Check Technology cannot yeah, control exactly, us exactly. and I think that's well not think I know that's where we are at this point is where technology is actually controlling us as humans and we're not controlling technology the advancement of technology is happening every day yeah. innovation is happening every day like even down to what you were doing like when you were collecting the shoes and right, everything like right, that's advancing right, right. you know uh, re recycling and, and right. knowing that you too can recycle but then you can also make a profit out right, of it right. you can sell it back you can give it you can right. donate it's so many different things it's just being do. sustainable uh -huh. but let's go back to the education piece Please because do. that's about you know that's what my campaign is about okay. i mean not only do i want to improve the uh, education system the public education system uh but i want to you know make education sexy in the city you know <laughs> so that you know particularly since we have this information tool at our hand 
we should be making ourselves more aware of what's going on. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be doing once I'm elected to city council is pushing education, pushing education about civics, about what's going on in our city. Because going around, you know, I ask people, do you know who your city council person is? 95% mm -hmm. don't know. They know some people, they, they may mention their state senator or their state <laughs> representative. And I'm like, no, nah, these are all different, you know, aspects of the of the branches of government. Back. And so going around, 90% of the people don't know how the government works. They don't know who their elected officials are. And even in some of the, 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 the districts, I looked at the maps, you know, of the voting history. There are certain maps that are completely blank with people who vote. So that area up there, uh, Gray's Ferry area, okay. which is my district, right? That area, most people don't vote over there. Why do you think they're not coming out to the polls? Well, nobody's motivating and inspiring them to come out. What are they doing? They're, they're apathetic. They don't see their uh, elected officials being responsive to their needs. Mm -hmm. And come on, if you're coming from the neighborhood, you know what the neighborhood needs. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to wait for your uh, to, to go to your representative to ask them for help. The representative should already know and have identified even before getting elected what they're going to do, what they're going to improve. And that's what I'm doing. I know where the problems lie in our in our community. Because that you are in the community. I'm in the community yeah. every single day because I go through the streets and identify the waste. And that's the other thing I want to really make explicitly clear that I will be that watchdog to, to watch over the waste awesome. that goes on in the city. You know, the wasted talent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the things that are wasted, but we have so many talented people in this city that's not being identified and not being, you know, used and not being allowed to, to show what they can do. And I think that has a lot to do with, you know, egos and, you know, who wants somebody to, to, to outshine you? Well, I do. I want the people that I'm, I interact to supersede me, mm -hmm. you know, just like when I was teaching at That's college. how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You want those people to, you know, who you teach, to take what you, you gave them and just, you know, and soar can, with exactly, it. Exactly, you know? and make it their own. And then yeah. also teaching them so they don't have to make the same mistakes that you right, made, you right. know what I'm saying? And let me ask you this because you talked about... Um, the education piece and then you also talked about how 95% of the population here in the city really do don't know right. who's controlling the city right. you know and the local government is the controllers right. of the city right. um, the local government is the controller of the state in right. general down right. from your mayor to your government I mean your governor I apologize to your city council at large down to your city councils down to your state reps right. you know what I'm saying so it's so many different people judges judges right. are up for election right. this time the sheriff is up for election right. this time around so what can you educate our listeners right now on um, city council at large like what is okay. the definition of that what does that role do why is it five roles up for re-election at this point tell us a little bit about city council at large well the, the the city council people or city council members in general set policy and, and legislation for what you can and cannot do in the city okay now the district council members are like the mayors of their district okay so there's nothing that goes on in a district that the council members don't know about mm -hmm. everything from every corner store to the plumbing the the, the water company the the um the infrastructure the, the cracks in the side. oh I gotta bring up the potholes, the man. Pie holes, right? <laughs> but they're the mayors, so the the council members at large govern the entire city, so mm -hmm. they can deal with issues all from over north the city. to south, north to Philly, south Philly, you know, outside of the particular district that they live in. Okay. Where the, the the district council members can only stay within the boundaries of their um, where they reside. Yeah, where, where where they reside. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you, it's it's like to give you an example of what a council person can do. Um. You know how you go into the restaurants or uh, like the uh, Dunkin' Donuts or, and you see the calories? There was a councilwoman who introduced that to show what the calorie intake of particular food was, right? And uh, that had to go through the council and they had to be voted on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that's the power of the uh, council members. They, they legislate whatever goes on. 
in the in, in their district and in the city of Philadelphia. Okay. And then why is it important that we make sure that we get out to elect a city council at large and also our city council? Yeah, members? it's important to vote in general because politics are a part of your life, whether you are you know participate in it or not. So how fast you can go down the street. Um, how late a store is open? What type of store can open up? Uh, mm. The buildings in your um, in your in your area. Um, Gentrification—they're responsible I'm for that. I'm going to ask you some questions about you know, that too. In, in terms of uh, how they allow the uh, ten, how the uh, ten-year tax abatement was allowed. All of that is controlled by the uh, city council members and the mayor. So I'm always inclined to want to participate in that in that process, and everybody should want to participate in the process since. Since you're governed by it. And you live here. And you live in the city of Philadelphia. And the more people that are involved and engaged, the less likely that, you know, we'll have these problems that we have in the city. Many times the elected officials ignore people when they don't vote. They know who votes. Like, I know exactly what areas of the city I have to go to and what people I need to convince to vote for me, they know the same thing. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we have to just make this city great by voting for 58. <laughs> I that's, you know, I, I really have a, a comprehensive uh, Philly Green plan, mm -hmm. you know, um, that involves effectively and efficiently recycling the uh, so-called waste of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So as a recycler, going throughout the city of philadelphia i've noticed obviously over the last 10 years how much waste or usable waste or commodities are being thrown away from mm -hmm. sneakers and shoes to vacuum cleaners to cell phones couches to laptops <laughs> well yeah couches i mean furniture one thing i do learn is about philadelphia notice about philadelphia because i'm not from here um but one thing i noticed since i've been here mm -hmm. is that when it comes to just throwing your junk out this city allows it. Like, right. I mean, from mattresses to right. couches right. to whole bed springs, right. like just sitting on the right. curb. Like, right. and that's something that I do not agree with. Right. You know I don't I mean? either. And that's why I have the Philly, Philly Green deal. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because it involves really extracting the waste. I mean, the uh, value from waste. Mm -hmm. We've always heard the saying, waste not, want not. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Mm -hmm. You figured out how to do that, uh, though. It's, you definitely it's down to, how to a do science. I'm about to say, you, know, you got it. <laughs> some people, you know, flip houses. Mm -hmm. I'm more sustainable and I flip trash. Facts. You know, so I'll go throughout the city of Philadelphia identifying those things that, you know, people deem as trash, like the laptops and mm -hmm. the, the different antiques and the artwork. And I see around all these colleges, man. Listen, primarily in the hood, believe it or not. Really? The hood, because we're the biggest consumers. Uh, and I want to really just like say that we have plenty of money in our communities, mm -hmm. but we have misplaced economics. We have a three, what, three trillion dollars uh, oh, over, spending power. Over, over, yeah, over a trillion, <laughs> way over a trillion. And a trillion. most of it doesn't come back to us because mm -hmm. we don't have businesses. And that's another plank of my platform is to inspire and motivate entrepreneurs and make it easier for people to become entrepreneurs and to deal with money and finances because again in the hood where afro americans african americans black people live mm -hmm. we we don't we don't have those things that bring money to us we're always putting money out, out yeah. so what do we need in our communities this is what i want to do i want to get small businesses in our communities yes. neighborhood businesses in our communities yes. green businesses in our communities right so uh, <laughs> green business, that's a green great plug. businesses, I mean, really, I mean, from uh, making, uh, from growing mushrooms. Mm -hmm. It's a sister that I'm working with, Zakia. She's, uh, she's working with some youth between Maine and Maryland, right? Awesome. And teaching how to grow mushrooms from cardboard, coffee grinds, leaves, and worms. Mm. So all of that stuff is free. And it produces something that brings money. Mushrooms, some of the best mushrooms. So that's just an example of the businesses that can be started in the green economy. Facts. We have all these, you know, Philadelphia has the largest land bank uh, in the country. This land should be used to grow food. It should be used as green space. Mm -hmm. 
you know I mean the the wasted energy that's a whole other area about an over 50% of the energy that we use is wasted because of in effect inefficient buildings you know uh, you, should, you should have a, a white roof as opposed to a black roof you know one brings in the, the heat one shoots the heat back up mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean to put it very, very simply and we need to know those things when we're when we're building so you're going to be putting these ideas out there ideas to, to and, make them be effective right, and efficient and being able to set policy on on that okay you know? but at the very least to be able to lead on those issues so okay. if the other council members are not thinking green they're not thinking sustainable they really shouldn't be in office they probably wouldn't go along with what i'm saying because they couldn't even pass the um the plastic bag uh, bag ban that uh councilman uh, Mark Squilla introduced about a year or so ago. DC definitely passed that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's one thing that irritates the hell out of me, though. Again, I, I represent bags. that change. I, I'm, I am not the, the standard politician, the, the standard elected official that, you know, doesn't know how to go down and get dirty and then can go right right up at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a unique candidate, one who essentially uh, became a teacher because the principal called me. <laughs> and said, yo, hey, Hagens, you know, you were a great student at Dobbins, you know, and uh, if you don't come back, we're going to shut this class down. So what are what are your goals for the first 30 days if you are voted into office? The first 30 days, wow, you're going to flip me off of my, my green stuff. One of the <laughs> most important things that's happening in Philadelphia that's gone unaddressed by the current uh, council members is this violence. Mm-hmm. We, Homicides went up about 14 and 19, but anywhere between 14 and 19 percent. It's about 114 or so yeah. you know, murders in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Where is the outrage? And look at who's getting murdered. It's black men getting murdered out in these streets. And how how is that being addressed? The first thing I want to do is call for public hearings in the hood to address this murder epidemic, this violence epidemic. To go to the hood and get what the people are talking about. To get their testimonies about what, what's going on. And speaking about the hearings in the hood, I also want city council members, I mean city council meetings to be in the hood at least once a month. Mm -hmm. We should have a city council meeting in uh, every district in the city. Well, let me tell you this. So um, Google a POC. So within in 2018, there were 351 homicides in the city of Philadelphia, which is more than <laughs> more than it has right. been since 2017. Right. And ending the entire year of 2018, coming up into January 2nd of 2019, was 391 murders. Right. right. Well, you know, the the murder count, the numbers. I mean, one is too many. So I like that. You know, the numbers are are good. You know, barometer, but. Mm -hmm. More importantly, we have to get people excited about education. You know, we have to get the, the people who are charged to go out there in the streets to, to stop this murder. You know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of nonprofit organizations that profess to be about, you know, helping the young men, helping the young women, but I don't see the results and they're getting funding year in and year out. You know, so those are some of the, 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 the watchdog areas that I wanna be able to um to to address but how are we going to even have that conversation amongst you know community to community from street to street to block to block to neighborhood to neighborhood to neighbor to neighbor because it starts with us right. you know i mean i do understand that we do have to bring the system to you know our neighborhoods to show them what it actually feels like and actually looks like when you are in our neighborhoods right. but at the same time if we're not having that conversation as neighbors as brothers and sisters right. as brother to brother sister to sister then how are we going to get that effective change we have to organize it oh, talk we, to it me it just has to be organized um, organize, organize, organize. Okay. Um, many of us know what the problems are. We talk about the problems amongst ourselves, but we don't come together to solve the problems. Mm -hmm. We need community. You know, again, that's that's a major part of you know why I'm running. I've always been able to to bring people together, um, and I believe that I can do that as a as a council member and. To also just bring a fresh 21st century, um, <laughs> you know, 
thought process to running the city. That's what it's about. Our uh, infrastructure needs a, a total overhaul. So we have to do something to, a, to address those issues and to be able to get funding to address those issues. I'm quite sure, you know, part of the reason of the, of the potholes is because of funding, but there has to be some way that we can protect the citizens of Philadelphia in their pockets. Because personally, and it's been documented on Facebook, I bust two tires mm. with these potholes and vent a, a, a rim. You know, and it's I know multiple me. friends that have done that. And how is the city addressing that? There's a constant war against poor people. Mm -hmm. And that's another one of my, you know, taglines. Stop the war against the poor. Mm. We have to address the issues that affect poor people. And um, they're, they're just not being addressed right now. They're like, what's happening is the current council members are distracting you. You know, and I spoke about that yet, uh, last week at the uh, council meeting about uh, a resolution that was introduced uh, by a current council member at large to, to condemn Donald Trump for cutting money for the Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. But while simultaneously, Philadelphia has the largest disabled population in the nation wow, I didn't and know the that. smallest disabled Wonder. disabilities uh, office in the city. Or, or, or in the in the in the country. Mm -hmm. So the biggest or the largest uh, handicapped or disabled population, and that includes people who are blind, people who can't walk, wow. people who can't hear, you know, people who may who have certain uh, uh, illnesses like diabetes that prevent them from walking. You mm -hmm. know, so disabilities cover a, a wide variety of of uh, people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just you know people who have walking problems. I get you. And so for to, to to shed light on what Donald Trump did when in your own backyard You're not doing it either. You're not doing it. I mean I mean and it's serious look about last summer, I don't know what happened with me. I had a pinched nerve. And literally I couldn't walk. I mean I needed a cane. When I went to the market I had to get in one of those uh cards. <laughs> right? it's, it, yo, it's funny now, right? But I couldn't walk and you know, it gave me the perspective of somebody who was uh, disabled. And uh, many times, we don't look at things from other people's perspectives. Mm -hmm. And that's what I bring to the table, too, as a council person. I'm not going to just look at how I feel. I got to bring different people from different areas of life to, to tell me, because I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and the great thing about this campaign, too, is that I have really good people behind me who have been helping me to strategize so that we can win this next next Shout out today. to the team. That's what it's yeah, all about, about because it takes a village. Yep, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Does. Definitely yeah. to and just... And the friends, yes. you know, and the families. And I just want to, too, I got I to gotta tell, like, people have really been, you know, shouting me out, you know, and from students from way back to people who wrote for the magazine. Awesome. And for, for me, it's just more, you know, testimony and confirmation that I'm doing the right thing. You, you are know? doing the right yeah. thing. And I just want to make a quick correction really fast. Um, the percent that it actually went up so far, the crime, the homicide rate in the city of Philadelphia is up 12%, 12 right now as of May 12, 2019. Right. So I just wanted to make that correction. I know I said 14 earlier. And then I also wanted to put this out there too mm -hmm. because we were talking about um, gentrification and this is a millennial-based show, right. you know? So I wanted to just ask a Shout couple questions. To the millennials. Thank you. And I wanted to ask a couple <laughs> questions about that because when you think about the um, population here in the city of Philadelphia um, non-Hispanic blacks make up about 42% of Philadelphia and when you include Hispanics you know black and brown together together we make up about 44% here of the population here in the city of Philadelphia so when you think about that and then at the same time you say that you want to create small businesses because there are not a lot of black owned businesses, there are not a lot of small businesses that are here in the city, but a lot of entrepreneurs are springing out of this millennial generation. Right. So what do you see or where do you see us fitting in in that plan as far as you creating, well, you know, avenue for small businesses? And many times when we think about businesses, we think of uh, brick and mortar businesses, uh -huh. but I'm talking about those uh green businesses, uh -huh. those businesses that use science, technology, engineering, and math, mm -hmm. that's just not in Philadelphia Shout right now. Shout out to Philly Tech Week last yeah, week, man. They were yeah, teaching that heavy. Yeah. We, you know, I mean, I, there's a brother I know that has um, classes 
to become a drone pilot. Mm -hmm. And then with a few more lessons, you can become an actual pilot. You know, how many of us and how many of our schools are teaching that or even letting, letting students know that that's a possibility? You know, they're on the, the, the cell phone all day playing all the games. They can do the same thing. They can transfer that skill from playing games to actually creating a career. Facts. And yeah. let me drop this statistic on you, too. So last week, Ernest Owens actually wrote a piece in the Philadelphia paper and said, um, well, he, he stated pretty much that only 2.5% of Philadelphia are made up of black-owned businesses. Right. Yeah. But we make up of 44%, which is almost half of the population here in the city, but only 2.5% of those go directly to black-owned businesses. So now, why aren't we creating our businesses? And why are we so, not getting the contracts for our businesses? Well, why are we not getting the loans for our businesses? Well, That's my question, you know what I mean? And how can those policies be changed as far as getting the zones? Uh, when Because right now in gentrification, a lot of zoning is being redone. A lot of zip codes are being redone, uh, repushed. Well, I don't even know how to say it, but it's being pushed out because um, of the zoning areas when all of these buildings and houses and everything are going up. Well, I mean... At this point, it's, it's kind of tough to get in it as an individual, mm -hmm. but I think um, I, I would look at the model of um, the Sudanese the Sudanese community in Philadelphia at 58th and um, Cobbs Creek. Over a six year period, they raised $600,000 awesome. to purchase and uh, renovate a community center. Okay. Paid off, complete. Okay. A community that wasn't here maybe 30 years ago was able to come together. So what I'm saying, what I'm, you know, advocating is that these uh, CDCs, these um, uh, uh, community organizations, uh, business people who have funds to put money together to get into the game, okay. to start buying up some of these, these properties as well. But we do have to address the inequities in the, in the banking system. Mm -hmm. But we also have to learn how the banking system mm -hmm. works. That's a fact too, um, great point. There's a sister that we're working with, uh, her name is uh, Dee Roberts. Okay. And she has uh, workshops on uh, called uh, Wealth Builders. And one of the things that she analyzes is, and she puts out there, is the difference between a home equity loan and a home equity line of credit. Okay. And how by having modest um, credit, or, or yeah, mod modest um, credit rating, um, you can pay off your house within a five year period. It takes some discipline and it takes understanding what money is and how we're, we're spending it. And one example that she gives is, and again, this is all part of the educating because again, we want to motivate and inspire with this position as well. Yes. So um, she, um, she, she shows us how when you go and buy potato chips, right? When you look at the price, you're actually paying like $20 a pound. Mm-hmm. Would you pay twenty dollars a pound for potatoes? <laughs> you see, so we don't look at how we're spending. When you buy coffee from, say, uh, you know, the typical coffee shop, Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, you're paying twenty-four to thirty dollars a gallon. Mm. But we complain about three dollars a gallon for uh, gasoline. So we have to rethink, you know, our, our economics. We have to stop wasting. You know, again, this is not anything that I can legislate. But I can, you know, put this information out to make our, our communities better. No doubt. But one of the things I do want to legislate is our education system, making sure that our children can read, write, and do math before they're just pushed out in, into the cruel world. And I'm glad that you even said that because my next question was actually going to go in that direction too because this is also election season for the mayor's race right. as well. This is a majority, a majority of races going up. Right. Um, and... One thing that Mary Kenny wanted to push for, you know, his term was the pre universal pre K system. Right. As you're speaking about um, education, so as you know, this term is coming up for the mayors to be reelected. What do right. you think about the mayor race at this time? Wow, it's uh, you know, Mayor Kenny missed a few um, uh, forums. Okay. You know, which is unfortunate. Um, from what I heard, he, he missed one. It was one at 3801. Okay. And. Um, Few hours before it was to happen when he canceled but uh it's i'm not down with the sugar tax okay but it's, it's the law now 
And what do we do? Until we have something that could adequately replace it, it, it has to stay in place. So where do you see for the budget, you know, the next fiscal year budget, especially with the new elected officials coming into play for the next fiscal year, for that budget to roll out? What are your plans for the budget? What are your thoughts on the budget? Where do you see Philadelphia growing so we don't have to have, you know, a 15% increase in our sold tax? Well, one of the things... We I, don't have to have a 10-year tax abuse. I, 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 I don't even know if... If we control the waste, if we analyze, did a study on the amount of waste, and I don't mean just physical waste, mm -hmm. but the, the money that's wasted, um, how is it being spent, you know? And I think once we can, you know, identify where the money is coming from and how it's being spent, we can then see where, you know, waste is because I, I just know in terms of energy, okay, just energy alone, 50% of all energy across America is wasted mm -hmm. because we just don't do the right things with our building. We're not building correctly, you know, in a, in a more, you know, green way. We're not using solar when we, we can clearly use solar now. Um, we can use wind energy now. Um, so that's that's the first thing that I would look at is okay. where, where the waste is. So okay. we can identify whether we do need to, you know, have new taxes. But there are some things going on in on a state level that's kind of interesting. I talk about this, uh, you know, sometimes about the um, the uh, tax for in, in gaming, where over the last, I believe, ten years, close to ten billion dollars of game a portion of gaming revenue oh man that's big has gone to racehorse breeders and developers in arizona and kentucky that's big you know so that's we all these casinos and just in the city of philadelphia right. alone it's like three of them right exactly yeah sugar house and there's one being built too yes yeah, right yeah. there and i'm um, right about before you get on the bridge yeah. You got Sugar House, the one that you just said is being built, and then I the Chester, the one that's right. in Chester, if you count right. that too. I mean, when you look at Philadelphia, we account and for, Valley Forge. Yeah, it's four. The Philadelphia area. That's four casinos. Black folk, inner city, support the casino. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it shouldn't be unimaginable that some of that money goes to our to our school district. Mm -hmm. You know, um, huh, it's a lot of money in the city. So we just have to figure out some, you know, unique ways of extracting that that money. There can be a percentage of, um, of the, you know, we have a, a stock exchange in mm -hmm. Philadelphia. There can be a percentage of the uh, gains that can go to the to the to the school district. Mm -hmm. We can look at the um, the uh, colleges and universities that don't pay taxes and create a unique way. Yeah, the whole town surrounding them right. now. Like and they, so, so I'm saying they're not paying taxes, right? So how about being responsible for, I don't want to give out my ideas. They're taking a multiple block, don't, <laughs> I don't No, but I have some ideas on how there can be a partnership between the colleges and universities in the school district of Philadelphia. Mm. And again, 21st century ideas. We, we got to move this thing forward. You know, right. we have the phones and we can see each other across the world. We have to run this city in the same in, in the same okay. way. And that's the change agent that I am. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the person. I'm the person that's going to be, you know, pushing. Have you pushing took a look at pushing. the 2020 plan that is supposed I, to be rolled I, out? I, I have, but I've been more focused on just dealing with this education piece okay. of what's happening right right now. Okay. And that's you know another thing. It's a lot of questions on these questionnaires and that I'm being asked, and I don't have all the answers right now. Mm -hmm. But I do have a team waiting to 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 come to assist in answering these questions and know. i love the fact that you're being transparent and saying that you don't have all the answers because right. there are a lot of politicians that will pop up and say they do got all right. the answers and just start right. making stuff off the top right. of the head or making false promises right. you know look, what i mean so i appreciate you not doing <laughs> yeah, that no doubt look i'm a planner mm -hmm. you know i'm an architectural designer i'm a retired teacher i'm a uh, uh i used to drive a cab used to have a radio program used to have a magazine so those are areas where you have to know how to organize mm -hmm. you, you can't do those things without being you know organized to a certain degree and I can take those same skills right to City Hall you know and change this city create a whole different idea look you look at my again using my students as an example they looked at me like I was crazy when I you know required them to, to not accept mediocrity uh -huh. but 
right now, if you ask them if they're, you know, using the same principles that they learned in the class, they'll, they'll tell you, almost all of them, I'm quite sure, that you know, Hagen's told us what we needed to do to be successful. And if we follow this, this path, we will be. And a lot of the things that I learned or that I taught came from my teacher at Dobbins, Mr. Joseph Kuo, awesome. who was a Chinese uh, teacher that uh, taught us college work 10th, 11th, and 12th grade of high school. So, which enabled us, like me, one week after I graduated, I had a job in an architectural firm drafting, producing construction, um, construction documents. Because I was prepared in high school, in a trade school, which we don't have now. And that's another thing that I'm gonna be pushing, you know, once I get in. Because college isn't for everybody. College is not for everybody, but education is for everybody. Yes. Knowledge is something that is the most so, powerful thing in so the world. So even though, like, my philosophy is this, even though you, you're, you wanna be an auto mechanic or a contractor, you still should take some psychology classes. You should still know about history. You know, you shouldn't just go in there and just make the money and just go, no, understand how the money works, understand how you got to where you, you know, you, you got to. Whose shoulders are you standing on? Okay. And I know right now I'm standing on the shoulders of giants awesome. that prepared me, you know, for this. Shout out to the ancestors. Yeah, for real. <laughs> oh, man, my grandma. Yes. Yo, Mary Freeman. My grandfather who just passed away, Paul Hagen Sr. Okay. You know, all of them, you know, my mom, of course, and, and my grandma, my father's, you know, mother, they all, you know, build this 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 hedge around me of, of protection, you know, as I was growing up. Because, again, my father was murdered in these streets, so nobody can tell me about the violence issue and how it affects family. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, I know how to, you know, my mom was a widow at, at 21. Okay. You know, my mom persevered, but she persevered because of the village, you know, because they were people who, you know, who helped. And we got to do the same thing. We keep saying that it starts at home. We know that it starts at home. But if there's no home, then what? Then where we start from? So it's up to the community That's a to great make question. this change, you know? Definitely. Speaking of the community, let me ask you this last question before mm -hmm. we wrap up. What is the one cry that you hear the community asking for? What do, what do, what do they need? What is the people asking Attention. for? Attention. <laughs> okay, what do you Attention. mean by that? They, they've never seen their council members. Okay. The one thing that they all tell me, all the constituents out there, when I go and shake their hand, it's the first time I shook a councilman's hand. Wow. They've never come into this area. Because I go into the stop and goes, I go into the Chinese joints, I'm up at 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning talking to people. Back. And I, I said this a few times on my uh, Facebook Live page that, you know that scene from Rocky? Rocky won when um, Apollo Creed's manager is seeing Rocky on TV, uh -huh. busting up the uh, the uh, cow, busting <laughs> up the ribs, right? Uh -huh. And he said, yo, hey, 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 champ, you want to take a look at this, right? And he didn't want to pay attention to it, but once he got in the ring with Rocky, he paid attention. And I'm saying the same thing to the, 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 the elected officials, to the ward leaders, to the committee people who doubt just because I don't have the, the war chest that all these other candidates have. The power of the people is stronger than man's technology. And the power of the people with technology is strong. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're using that and we're touching people. I, I keep saying if I can touch 50,000 people hands and get 50,000, you know, flyers out. I got this election without a doubt, and I'm doing everything that I can awesome. along with the people who are working with me. I'm so with I just want to remind everybody it's 5 8 to make Philly great. 5 8 to make Philly great. 5 8. <laughs> Love over hate. Shout out to OG Law. OG Law has some rhymes. I don't know if you know OG Law. Oh, man, that's a whole other story. <laughs> he's, he's been doing some major work about prison reform in the city. Okay. He made a prison. A cell and he travels around in that cell to encourage young people wow. you know not to go to jail he's here you know? in the city of philadelphia he's right here in philadelphia Please he's actually doing me. something he did a big mural that he's traveling across the country of nipsey hustle awesome yeah to, you know to draw attention to that and his entrepreneurial spirit you know before he was tragically taken away from it shout out to mm -hmm. uh nipsey, nipsey russell mm -hmm. yeah nipsey hustle you know? yeah i mean <laughs> nipsey also <laughs> nipsey <laughs> russell was the uh comedian that you know uh -huh. took the name from so yeah I'm with you on that. And once again, tell the people how they can find you, how they can stay locked, and the website, social media, all the above. Yeah, HagensForPhilly.org, HagensForPhilly.org. 
That's H-A-G-I-N-S-F-O-R-P-H-I-L-L-Y. You know, we have a commercial, too. I wanted to... Uh, I didn't know oh, that. man, I wanted to... Um, to get that to you, but I guess we'll get that next time. Yes, or, man, because we're going to invite you back, you know what I'm saying, especially when you up. win we this election. We want to get out and vote, too. Yes. Sorry, yeah, not to cut you, but we You're want to get out to vote. Mm-hmm. On May the 21st is, is very important. I won vice president in junior high school three <laughs> votes. Three votes. So some people were absent that day. They lost their vote. Uh-huh. You know, so I'm saying to the people, don't think that your vote don't count. Tell Jay-Z when he's at... You know, uh, four hundred ninety nine ninety nine. That that one extra cell Fact. doesn't count to him going gold. Mm-hmm. So every vote counts. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. Five eight to make Philly great. Yes, yes. Five eight love over hate. Check me out in yesterday's Enquirer too. Okay. There was what a story there? about. There was a story in there. You know about the um, the activist candidates. Okay. You know, and I'm that act- activist for the uh, for the environment. Yes. And for you. Yes. And for education, mm-hmm. you know, and for sustainability. So I got a lot of areas covered. I have big, big ideas. And you know that's Innovating song. ideas. Innovative. Effective you know. changes. Effective. That's what we need. That's exactly Effective. what we need. And I truly appreciate you yeah. coming to support us here at Revive no, Radio. You. Again, you know what I mean? Because yeah, we truly support up. what you do because you support us. And I definitely understand that, you know, the effective changes that you want to make start, you know, from the root. Right. You know what I mean? It starts right. from the root. You're going right. grassroots with this tree campaign. Roots. Yes, tree, tree roots. roots. <laughs> tree roots. This is a dug in because yes. it's hard to dig those tree yes. roots up. And I see it yeah. definitely by you keep talking about the energy, talking about recycling, talking right. about different things that we need in order to sustain, right. which exactly. is another key word exactly. that you continue to use. Exactly. So I appreciate what you're doing. I Thank definitely you. wish you many blessings That's on right. your future. Shout endeavors. out to the millennials. Yes, man. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you. No doubt, man. You already know what time it is. Revive is Alive, 365, 24-7 a.m. to the p.m. We'll be back tomorrow starting at 7 a.m., man, getting this good morning mix with us each and every morning starting at 7 a.m. tomorrow. You got your guy. DJ Reese on the ones and twos so definitely getting this good morning mix and don't forget if you're an artist who got some music out there send it our way so you too can be played live here on Revive we're always looking for man some new and improved guests also on our show as well so if you are a guest out there who want to be a guest on the show you know what I'm saying definitely send it our way right now revive.poc at gmail.com shout out to my girl Harmony the Goddess and Tab Money for always holding it down we'll be back tomorrow starting at 7 getting this good morning mix Revive is Alive Revive is Alive Revive Vibe is alive.com. And also, man, I want to definitely make sure I give this good shout out too. Shout out to my guy Slim Jones out of Memphis, Tennessee, for sending that good morning mix this morning, man. I appreciate you for supporting who supports you. 58 to make Philly great. Let's go. Shout out to my guy Philly Green, man. Get on vote May 21st. We're gonna meet you at the post because Revive is alive 365, 24 7. And do the